This video is sponsored by Surfshark. The Simpsons will soon be celebrating its 700th episode, and with such a long-running show, there will be inevitably some moments that will make you go, what? Well, it's this category I'm going to focus on today. Yes, The Simpsons aren't afraid to go a little crazy with its storylines, and we're going to take a look at the strangest of all time. But strange doesn't necessarily mean bad. In fact, most of these episodes on this list are great but none of them fit the mould of the traditional Simpsons episode. So enough of my babbling, this is the 10 Strangest Simpsons Episodes. Number 10. The Mysterious Voyage of Homer After Homer goes to a chilli cook-off and ingests a lethal dosage of chilli, he goes on a spiritual quest to find out who exactly his true soulmate really is. So what makes it strange? Like I said in the intro, strange doesn't mean bad. This episode is one of the most memorable yet. Homer's chili trip is one of the most psychedelic things you'll ever see on TV. The imagery is gorgeous from the colours to the abstract landscapes. This creative sequence sees giant butterflies and talking coyotes voiced by the legend Johnny Cash. Not forgetting the iconic scene that sees Homer chasing around a faceless Marge until she disintegrates into dust. This spirit quest is one of the strangest moments in the entire show, but that's just what makes it unforgettable. Number 9. The Springfield Files after Homer sees an alien in the woods, FBI agents Mulder and Scully come to Springfield to investigate. Of course, no one believes him, so him and Bart set out to prove that the alien is real. They do capture the footage of the strange creature, but the glowing extraterrestrial turns out to be a doped up Mr. Burns, who has gone for a little wonder after countless medical procedures. So what makes this strange? So the whole episode is told as a story within a story, positioning Leonard Nimoy as the narrator in a parody of his show In Search Of. The entire episode has a very different feel and atmosphere to the others that precede it. This is partly due to the appearances of Agent Mulder and Scully from The X-Files and the devices of their show and sci-fi that they bring with them. For instance, the entire episode is stylized similarly to their show, with subdued colors, moody and iconic music, with location captions at the bottom of the frame. And if bumping into the X-Files crew and Leonard Nimoy wasn't enough, we even get appearances from Marvin the Martian, Gort, Alf and Chewbacca during a lineup sequence. Its bizarreness only makes it more memorable. I still remember seeing this scene for the first time and admittedly being a bit freaked out. Don't be afraid. Number 8, 138th Simpson Spectacular. This meta season 7 episode takes us behind the scenes with Troy McClure. He answers fan questions and we're then shown alternate endings to Who Shot Mr. Burns. What makes this episode so strange? Well, this episode is so completely different to any other episode at this point. The episode positions the Simpsons family as actors and that the house is actually set with a real life audience. They do delve into this concept a bit more a few seasons later, but more on that soon. It's pretty much devoid of the Simpsons themselves, only being referenced in archival footage. But the early clips from this are really interesting, and for many of us who weren't around in the 80s, this was our first ever glimpse of the Simpsons shorts. <laughs> they haven't changed a bit, have they? Number 7. Brick Like Me Homer wakes up to find that he and the entire town are made out of Lego. At first, everything is great and nothing changes, but when he starts having visions of the real world, he must decide whether or not to return or stay in the perfect make-believe Lego world. So you know how it goes, what makes this strange? Almost the entire episode is told through CG Lego, and the episode coincided with the release of the Simpsons Lego sets. It's not selling out, it's co-branding, co-branding! And just like the Lego itself, it's crazy creative. The animation is gorgeous, and for its TV show budget, they take advantage of the premise. Personally, I never thought I'd see Bart build an entire mecha suit out of Lego that fires lions and lightsaber buff, but I'm glad I did. I really like this episode, it's really creative and out of the box, despite the plot being very similar to the Simpsons movie. No, no it's not. It's a new plot. It also has a really great message about the importance of letting your children grow up and learning when to let them go, even though Lisa's been 8 years old for 30 years. Number 6. Behind the Laughter Stylized as a mockumentary, this meta special takes us behind the scenes of the real Simpsons family. We find out that the Simpsons show that we know of is actually a stage reality series. 
It depicts the fictionalised version of how The Simpsons began and the family's rise and fall in stardom. So what makes this strange? The episode is a parody of the VH1 show Behind the Music, and I believe it's one of the most meta episodes of the entire show. It presents us with how Homer made a sitcom on his family and how it evolved into a truly successful show. It depicts their on-stage drama and rivalries, fallout and eventual makeup. The idea that everyone in the show, including the background characters, were actually actors all along is a pretty funny premise. I've even got a catchphrase. Yeah. Wah. I actually dive into this episode in a bit more detail in my video The Simpsons The Show Within a Show, a theory that explains that this could be the only canon Simpsons episode and how the entire series is just a reality show. And just in case you're interested, I've linked the video in the description below. Before we continue, I'd like to say thank you to the sponsor of this video, Surfshark. At this point, everyone knows what a VPN is, even Dum Dum Homer. It protects you while you're on the internet. It helps prevent your personal data from being stolen by the likes of Mr. Snrubs or Guy Incognito. Surfshark VPN lets you connect to servers around the world. So if you're American and want to see what's going on on the UK Netflix, you can. And with Surfshark VPN, you can have it on an unlimited number of devices with just one subscription. Also, with Surfshark Alert, you get immediate alerts if your personal information appears in leaked databases. So you can stay ahead of hackers by changing your login before your account gets taken over. Sign up to Surfshark VPN and use the promo code SIMPSONS for 83% off and three extra months for free. The link is in the description. Now back to the video. Number 5. The Surfsons Set in the magical fantasy land of Springfieldia, the Simpsons, or the Surfsons I should say, have to find a cure for Marge's mother, who is slowly turning into an ice walker, and so the family go on an adventure with wizards, witches, and dragons. So what makes this strange? Unlike other out of the ordinary episodes, this doesn't have a lead up. It didn't start with one of the Simpsons telling a story, looking back into a mystic fire, or even telling a fortune teller to begin the transformation into another realm. The episode just drops us off immediately in the midst of the fairy tale. And in all honesty, it almost feels like more of a disenchantment episode than a Simpsons one. Not that it's a bad thing, I always do applaud the Simpsons when they try something new, as it's very easy for a TV show to fall into the same behaviours and rehashing the same storylines. It's got talking lions, a petulatinous cube, magical creatures and even the Ice King of Game of Thrones. So yeah, it's a pretty strange Simpsons episode to say the least. Number 4. The Man Who Came To Be Dinner the episode starts with a family visiting Disneyland. When all the queues are way too long, they rush over to the new empty rocket ride. But when they get on it, it transforms into a real life spaceship, proceeding to blast them off into space. Kang and Kodos appear on screen to tell the family that they are now being abducted. So what makes this strange? Well, for starters, it's not Halloween. What the? This isn't Halloween. Kang and Kodos are usually confined to only Treehouse of Horror episodes, making this the only time they are featured heavily in a regular episode, and seeing the Simpsons family interact with Kang and Kodos outside of an anthology episode is a bit weird. The early seasons of The Simpsons were relatively grounded, and now we are seeing the Simpsons family on an alien homeworld and they don't even bat an eye. But overall, I don't think this is a bad episode. There are a few laughs to be had throughout, especially at the beginning with the Disney World parody section and the politically correct parts of the Caribbean. But personally, I think it's quite jarring going from a regular concept of The Simpsons visiting a theme park to going into out of space and being prisoners in an alien zoo. Number 3. Simpson Rama when Bart's sandwich, Milhouse's rabbit foot and radioactive ooze are dropped into a time capsule, it results into a horde of bar goblins that cause mass destruction in the future. The Planet Express crew venture back in time to kill Homer, in order to stop it happening before it happens. So what makes it strange? Although The Simpsons have interacted with some of the Futurama characters briefly in the past, none of those were considered canon. So seeing them face to face in a full on episode was pretty crazy to see. 
The two shows are polar opposites in regards to their setting and story. The Simpsons are set in our present day, about a lower middle class family, while Futurama is set in the year 3000 and deals with sci-fi concepts like aliens and time travel. They couldn't be more different. And at the end of the episode, we see Bender falling asleep in the Simpsons basement, and we see him again in a couple of episodes later on. This arguably makes Simpson Rama a canon episode, which only makes it more baffling. Another strange thing about this episode is the fact that The Simpsons is a television show within Futurama, and Futurama is a show within The Simpsons. So this pairing is a bit odd, particularly because no one mentions this and you'd have thought that there would be some kind of explanation that the writers could have come up with to sum it up. You'd have at least thought Fry would bring it up, but no. Some Bart Simpson dolls. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video where I look at every Futurama reference in The Simpsons. Number two, Simpsons guy. All right, all right, I'll hold my hands up. I'm technically cheating with this one as this crossover is a Family Guy episode. But seeing as it takes place in Springfield and features the original voice actors, I'm including it. When the Griffin's car is stolen, they find themselves stranded in Springfield. It is here where Homer and Peter finally come face to face. And although they initially get on like a house on fire, their new friendship quickly turns sour when Homer discovers that Portucket Ale is a ripoff of Duff. This leads to a legal battle and a fallout between the pair. So what makes this strange? This episode in itself is an amalgamation of self-referential humour on how Family Guy copied The Simpsons, with a lawsuit over a Duff copyright infringement which basically mirrors this entire message. But the episode really goes off the rails towards the end of the episode, when it goes full Family Guy chicken fight territory. Homer and Peter get into a fight and start trading blows across the town. They pummel each other on a bus and smash into the power plant. Homer throws his many enemies at Peter, which causes a meltdown. They fall through stories of the power plant splashing into a pool of toxic waste. The green slime gives them incredible powers, including super strength and flight. They fly each other with supersonic speeds and the resulting impact causes the destruction of Springfield. This entire sequence is so over the top and so overly long, even for a Family Guy fight, which has tendency to repeat a joke until it's not funny anymore. In a way, I can only imagine it's to fill time. It's the strangest thing ever involving Homer and that is saying a lot. And I think personally, Comic Book Guy got it right in the end when he said, Worst chicken fight ever. Number one, Mo goes from rags to riches. This episode focuses on a rag in Moe's Taverne, voiced by Jeremy Irons, who tells the story of how it began as a medieval French tapestry to ending up at Moe's Tavern. We see its adventures through time, from being eaten by a Viking to a Persian haram, chopping block cloth, Michelangelo's paint rag made into soup during the Great Depression, and taken to Mount Everest, where it's found to be by a yeti who gave the rag to his son, Moe. Wow, this guy's had more stories than Forrest Gump. Life was like a box of chocolates. So what makes it strange? Well, for starters, this episode is about a talking magical rag. It's such a wild premise for a Simpsons episode to focus on a dirty bar rag's life story. The rag is essentially used as a plot device so we can see the Simpsons in different time periods throughout history. But framing the episode within a story told by a piece of fabric is the most bizarre thing I have ever seen. How the hell did we go from a family confronting everyday issues like money troubles to hearing about a sword fabric's life story? But what do you guys think? Which one of these is the strangest Simpsons episode? And is there any that I have missed out? Let me know in your comments below. And finally, I'd like to end my video by saying a huge thank you to my newest Flying Hellfish members, Nicola Chill, Nerdcentric, Jeffrey Farrow and Felix L. Skull. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you'd like to join the Hellfish unit, then check out the link in the description below. And of course, a thank you to my other lovely patrons. We have Timothy, who else but Zane, Liam, Tommy, Steve, Charlie, Sean, Justin, Andre, Stefan, Jake, David, Nicholas, Vincent, Robert, Ashley, Kevin, Rob, Devin, Gadrak, Bailey, Stephen, Edward, Anthony, Nicholas, Nerdcentric, Jeffrey, and Felix.